Welcome to worship on this first Sunday of April, the fifth Sunday in Lent. It's also a Communion Sunday, so if you've not already gathered together your elements for Communion, I invite you to do that now so that when we come together to the table, we can all come bringing what we have for elements to worship together. Today is also our annual meeting Sunday, so those of you who are joining via Zoom, we hope to see you at 11.30, um, and those who will be in person, we are glad that they are staying and going to be here. We come together once again to worship, and although we still are not all together in the same place, we still worship in community whether it be across the miles and distance, or whether it be physically in the same space, we are still community. We still build community together in multiple ways each and every week. And so, for those of you who have been with us for over two years online, thank you. And we are glad that you continue to join with us, that you bring all that you are to this virtual space so that we can come together and worship. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. We hope that you find this time together to be life-giving, enlivening, spirit-filled. And so let us come together this day, this Communion Sunday on the first Sunday of April, to worship God in word and song. During Lent, we, re we remember the events that led to the crucifixion. Jesus had come to bring hope and light to the world, but at every step there were those who could not accept the power of the light. He came to meet people's needs, but there were those who misunderstood the kind of needs that Jesus meant to fill. Because he would not do what they wanted, they rejected him. But you call us to more. You call us to be bearers of love and beauty in the world as you came to bear the beauty of light and love to the world. We light this candle to remember that we are called to more, that we are challenged by your example of light and love to be bearers of light and love and brazen acts of beauty in this world. Please join me in the call to worship. May we find courage here, courage to follow our call, courage to live out our faith. May we find hope here, hope for a better world, hope that refuses to let us go. May we find all that we seek about our faith. May we find hope here, hope for a better world, hope that refuses to let us go. May we find all that we seek, and in our seeking, may we know God today in this place of worship. Amen.
daily in the prayer of approach and confession. Loving and nurturing God, there are very few things as powerful as a group of people that admits they are not perfect and asks for grace as they grow. Imagine what our world might be like if every institution had such a weekly ritual. We can light the way, let us come together today in community, and let us be brave in our truth-telling and honest in our confession. For, loving God, we know that we will always be met by grace. We admit that often we tuck our faith into our pockets, hiding it in a place of comfort, rather than proudly declaring, yes, we are a Christian. Yes, we do believe. You, this faith, has changed me. We are so afraid of offending others or embarrassing ourselves that we have established rules. No faith at the dinner table, no faith in politics, no faith with strangers. Forgive us for whispering when we could be singing. Forgive us for staying quiet when we could be part of rewriting the narrative. We want to be brave. We want to pour out perfume over your feet. These things we pray, amen. Hear these words of good news. Even in our silence, God loves us. Even in our fear or shame, God chooses us. Even when we sin, God wraps us in grace. You are free to be bold, to be brazen, to be exactly who God called you to be. Thanks be to God. Amen. So today in our Time for All Ages, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about my, my preconceived notions and ideas. So today we hear the story of, of Mary anointing Jesus' feet. And when I read this story, I always have this picture in my mind of Mary taking this huge earthenware clay jar of perfume and breaking it open and anointing Jesus' feet with that. And I'm not sure if that's the truth of the story, but that's always what's in my head. And, and yet I think about it, I'm like, why do I always think of this idea of, of this excess amount of perfume? Because the disciples are angry because she's using all of this perfume and it's expensive and it's precious. And I'm, I always think of that as being a large, great amount. And that's not always the case. So think about if you buy perfume. Many of us don't actually buy perfume perfume because perfume comes in a little tiny bottle like this and it's very concentrated. Most of us buy cologne or eau de, eau de toilette um, in this size of a container or something even a little bit larger. Which one is more? Many of us would say, well, this one's filled to the brim and it's more. And this one's a lot less. And by volume, that might be true. But for those of us who have ever had or, or purchased real perfume, you know that quite often there's just a little tiny dabber in there and you put a little tiny bit on your wrist or a little tiny bit here, and that is more than enough. So sometimes when we talk about excessive amount, it doesn't necessarily mean that there is this huge amount of what we have. What we mean is that it expands, it gets larger. It, that little tiny bit can go further than what we expected. And that's what perfume does because it is so concentrated 
real perfume. You use just a tiny little bit and that is more than enough and it can permeate an entire room with that beautiful scent. And so when we think about these stories and we think about the excess, it doesn't always mean a huge container or a huge amount. What it means is that it, it is impactful in its excess. And so when we talk about being filled to the brim, and, and today we're going to be talking about filled to the brim with the beauty, it's about how we use that beauty to impact in a large way. It's not about big, huge, grandiose um, acts of love and beauty, but it's about what we do and how what we do, even in the smallest act, can have the largest of impacts, as in the smallest amount of perfume can have the largest of impacts. So think about that as we go through the rest of the service. And think about that as we talk about the brazen acts of beauty, brazen acts of worship, as we go through the rest of the service. And we'll talk to you next time at our Time for All Ages. Our first reading this morning is from Isaiah 43 verses 16 to 21. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise, they are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the de desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. Our second reading this morning is from John chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Today on our journey to Jerusalem with Jesus, we heard a story of great love. A story of Jesus being anointed by Mary. It's also a very interesting and possibly quite appropriate piece of scripture to have on a Communion Sunday. But I want to start with a, a little bit of a story. We had this young one who used to come to Windsor Park United Church before his family moved away. And whenever he came into the building, the first thing that he did was to remove his shoes and his socks and run around in his bare feet. He didn't care. He did what he felt he needed to do in this place, what we might want to say, what he, you know, that he was called to do in this place. His mother, on the other hand, was horrified. And I remember that someone remarked to her once that it was a beautiful thing that he felt so at home here, so comfortable here, that he would immediately come in, take off his shoes and his socks, exactly what his mother said he did the moment he got into his house. It was a simple act, but it was an act of beauty by breaking the norms of behavior 
that many of us have come to expect. The story today, the story of Mary anointing Jesus' feet, reminds me of that Japanese art of kintsugi. Now, kintsugi is the Japanese art of putting together broken pieces of pottery with gold. And it's built on the idea of embracing flaws and imperfections so that you can create an even stronger, more beautiful piece of art. In her artist statements in our resource, Full to the Brim, this week, Reverend Liesel Gwynne Garrity writes about Mary this. The vessel she holds is lined with gold, a reference to the ancient Japanese practice of kintsugi, of repairing broken pottery with gold lacquer. The art of kintsugi embellishes the cracks and transforms a shattered vessel into a new object of beauty. In this embodied act of worship, Mary is practicing kintsugi. It's the art of finding beauty in the unexpected, in what many might have discarded. But what might that have to do with us and with the scriptures that we heard today? In our reading today, we hear that not, not long after their brother Lazarus has died and is raised again from the dead, Mary and Martha, the sisters, joyfully welcome Jesus into their home. And it is at this time that Mary pours out a perfume which most likely would have been used to anoint her brother's body on Jesus' feet and anoints him. What was to be used in death is now used in life. Reverend Larissa Kwong Abizia reflects on the story in the following way when she says, The story of Mary breaking open a jar of expensive perfume is surrounded by death. One chapter earlier, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead at the risk of his own life. Returning to Judea and resurrecting the dead became the final actions necessary for the religious and political leaders to conspire against him. And yet here is this faithful family, welcoming and celebrating Christ as the outside world seeks to write a very different story. So Mary comes and she anoints Jesus with this expensive perfume. And the disciples who are witnessing this act by Mary decry what they see as a wasteful use of something that is so precious. They pass judgment on Mary and her act of caring for Jesus. And it is to this judgment that Jesus speaks. And in his words, he accepts Mary's offering. In this story, Mary does something that we don't often talk about. She offers to Christ an offering of deep love, an act that is seen by others to be as a scandalous act of excess. Reverend Abasia calls this a brazen act of beauty. What does brazen mean? It means to do something boldly and without shame. This act truly is a brazen act of beauty. Beauty in resistance to death. Beauty as an act of love. Her anointing, Jesus' feet, is a public act of worship. Her faith does not hide. Her faith is not frugal. It is embodied and broken open and poured out. This isn't a frugal faith. It is an abundant, extravagant faith. Mary's act is also risky. She puts her entire body in it, using her hair sort of like a protest against everything that has happened. 
she exhibits a shameless, brazen faith. And so understanding that this act that Mary confers on Jesus is a brazen act, how might we understand this story in our lives today? I think that we too are called to a brazen faith, called to brazen acts of beauty in our lives and in the world, even in the midst of what this world has thrown at us, the confusion and chaos of the past few years, the ongoing strife and violence that we deal with in the world, and I dare say the fear that many of us have about moving forward and not knowing what the future will bring. We are challenged in the midst of all of this to have a brazen faith and to worship God with brazen acts of beauty. One might even say that we might be called to tear off our socks and shoes and run barefoot in a brazen, careful, in a carefree, brazen act of worship to God. We are called to crack open our hearts and our souls and to pour out all that we are in our worship and into our community, into our world with God. Even when we feel that we might not measure up, God is calling us challenging us to beautiful, embodied, brazen acts of worship, calling us to bring our whole selves to this community, to our faith, to the world, to worship, to God. Because you see, God needs our whole lives, even when we feel that our lives might not be worthy. We are filled with the love of God. And that love calls us to brazen acts of beauty in our lives, in this community, and in the world. It goes beyond what we do in worship. Mary, in offering that beautiful brazen act of beauty to God, has offered us an example as to how we are called to live our lives, not just in this place, in worship, but every day. Because even in the midst of these challenging and troubling times, God calls us to live lives of brazen beauty, called to acknowledge and recognize the brazen beauty that exists in each and every one of us as glorious and beautiful creations of God. And when we begin to see ourselves this way, that we too are brazenly beautiful as creations of God, then maybe we start to live that way in all that we do. We will see our worth, not in the world, but in the gift that is our life. And so, as we continue our journey with Jesus, let us remember that extravagant, brazen act of Mary anointing Jesus' feet, and let us embody that same brazen beauty in all that we do. Let us embody that brazen beauty as a community who loves God deeply, embraces justice reverently, and sees the beauty not only in ourselves, but in those around us and in the world. We are brazenly beautiful. Let us live each day embracing that truth. Thanks be to God. Amen.
So if you've not gathered together your communion elements, I invite you to do that now as we come to God's table to celebrate communion. God be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, you bore up the ark on the waters, saved Noah and his family, and made covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, you gave us commandments and made us your covenant people. When your people forsook your covenant, your prophet Elijah fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights, and on, our, on your holy mountain, he heard your still, small voice. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit led him into the wilderness, where he fasted for forty days and forty nights to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on the cross, you raised him to life, presented him alive to the apostles during forty days, and exalted him at your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering and death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us a new covenant by water with your Spirit. Now, when we, your people, prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance for sin and the cleansing of our hearts, that during the 40 days of Lent we may be gifted and graced by your extravagant love by your brazen acts of beauty, to reaffirm the covenant you made with us through Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you. Gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, and as often as you drink it, remember me. And so, in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer our thanksgiving and praise as the holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim together the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour your Holy Spirit, on, Spirit out on us who are gathered here as we as we remember those in this community, we hope will feel your spirit today. As we pray for Marlene, Susan, Rob, Ken, Lindsay, Reese, Hayden, August, Janice, Kim, Brian, Diana, Olga, Liam, Heather, Barb, Jane, Dave, Richard, Ralph, Maisel, Ailey, Sinead, Cam, Nola, Curtis. We also pray for this world. We pray for the people of Ukraine who are valiantly fighting to self-determination, to live free, to live as they choose 
as an independent nation. We pray for those people in Russia who are protesting against their government actions, this war in Ukraine. We pray for all places that feel violence today in our world. We pray for the community of Windsor Park United Church as we have our annual general meeting today and face some challenging conversations moving forward. We pray for all frontline workers and teachers as they continue to navigate this ongoing pandemic. We continue to offer prayers for healing for First Nations and Métis people across this country. And we pray for all refugees and displaced persons across this world, knowing that there are so many. We offer all of these prayers in Jesus' name. We ask that you make these gifts for us a sign of your love, grace, mercy, compassion, and brazen beauty, so that we might become bearers of these gifts to the world. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry for all the world, until Christ comes again and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through Christ, in Christ, and with Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Bread of Life. The Cup of the New Covenant. Let us pray. Thank you, merciful God, for gladness in this bread and cup, for love that cannot die, for peace the world cannot give, for joy in the company of friends, for the splendors of creation, for brazen acts of beauty, for the mission of justice you have made your own. Give us the gifts of this holy communion, oneness of heart, love for neighbors, forgiveness of enemies, the will to serve you every day and life that never ends. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
As you leave this place, may you be awestruck by the beauty of the world. May you laugh and may it be contagious. May you overflow with love for those around you. May you be bubbling over with hope and quick to point out joy. And in all of your living, breathing, and being, may you find yourself full to the brim with God's Holy Spirit. And may it change your life. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself, go in peace, full to the brim. Amen.